So, what is this sport? Beach volleyball? <laughs> I don't think so. It's actually European hot rods, and it's high in octane and low in publicity and in press. But like any other sport, if you want to make it to the top, you've got to be dedicated and you've got to be devoted. This is it. This is the top of the range for hot rods. This is Pat Canavan's car. Pat, how much does it cost to put the whole package together? Roughly the whole package costs 15000 I haven't even got a son in the pack. No, not yet. <laughs> got involved in the sport, you're, you're well established in it now, but, but how did it all start? It started probably when I was about 20, 21. I bought a car um, for a local club that was here, Norcock, which was still running and running well. And I started racing with those on the grass. And I moved from that then to a, a track in Dungarvan, the pike they call it. And it's um, slightly longer than a quarter of a mile, but it's not an oval track. It's a, a purpose-built track, quite good. And we raced there for a year and a half, two years, and we moved into Rose Green. Pat, 15,000 pounds in the car, and at the risk of sending derogatory, there doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot to it. I mean, where, where does the money go? Well, the most expensive part is probably the engine, which cost 7,100. And the chassis, then, I bought the chassis in England from SHP Motorsport. Um, there's only 10 built in the world. Um, that costs 6,200. Um, there's three doors in Ireland. There's one in South Africa. There's uh, two in Belgium. And the rest of them are in England. So you spend the money very quickly? Well, that was the two most expensive parts. Okay. Everything else then we kind of stopped with ourselves. The track itself, how long is it and how fast good do you go around it? The track is a quarter of a mile. The time lapse at the moment, as in from start to finish is 15.7 to 15.8 seconds. If the cars aren't on that speed, like you're going to be left behind in a long race, if there's 20 laps down, if you're 0 0.2 seconds behind, I mean, like, you can take 2 point, 0.2 seconds every lap. So I multiply that by 20, and you're, mm. you're 2 seconds behind at the end of the race, which is a lot. What sort of speed are you doing? At the end of the straight, so you'd probably hit speeds of, of close on 100 miles an hour. Right, we can put that wheel back on so now. What do you need to be a good driver of a hot rod? Well, you need to be physically fit in here first. You need to be physically fit. And you need to have... Um, you know? It's draining. It would drain you, actually, a long race. The big race is down in England, of 75 laps. The race in Rose Green the weekend now will be 50 laps. I think there was one 60 lap. And you need to have... A, if your car is working very well, it doesn't drain you as much. You know? People will look at the car and go, how different is it from a car that would be on the road? I mean, how different is it to drive? Well, these cars now, the way they're built, they will go on um, right-hand bins, but you don't go left-hand bins with them. You know, that's the way the car is set. It's totally different to drive an ordinary road car. How many gears are in it? There's three gears, three forward gears. And so you're saying to me you can't go left at all in it? You can go left, but not as fast. Not as fast. Could you drive this car on the road? No. It's too low. It's too low. The cars are set at a standard height. You can't go no further down than 65 millimetres close to the ground. And if you go beyond that point, then you're illegal. So I run my car 68 millimetres from the ground. And um, the closer you can run the car to the ground, the more downforce you'll have, the better the car will hold. What caused the crashes? I mean, is it the weather, bad driving? Um, you can come across another driver that wouldn't be holding his line and he might cause an accident, you know. But it is a non-contact sport It is such. a non-contact sport, yeah. And if you do have a contact like your black flagged or your black crossed, which means you're down a place or two places, if you push the guy in front of you that's winning and he loses control of his car, you're docked in. You could be put down to second place or third place, whichever the flagman desires. When you're driving, how close are you to the car in front? Anything from an inch down. You can come, come up to them within an inch. And you have to race flat out within that inch. You know, on the outside or the inside, or behind them. You know, you're not supposed to contact. There's no contact of a... There's no contact allowed. So you had a wee bit of an accident, yeah? Yes, we were racing Hindersfoot and uh, 
last uh, weekend in October, in September, sorry. And um, we had an accident in the fourth race. That we got caught in another driver's wheel and hit the wall. And um, the steering wheel caught my hand. Right on the just, just here, in, in, on the thumb, yeah. And just broke a bone just here on that wrist. And did it not make you want to back off and not race for a while? Well, I had it in plaster for two weeks. And um, one night I spilled some, we were painting a car and I spilled some tennis nut and it kind of burned it. So I just took it off. You talk about the safety in the sport. I mean, does it not? Does that not worry you? Does it, or is it just a risk you accept? Well, that's a risk you have to accept. That happens in every sport, you know. But uh, we we did a lot of physio with the hand now just to get a right for this weekend, and hopefully we will be on the button. Talk about dedication to sport. Well, what about this? heading on for nearly 10 o'clock at night and the guys are still working on the car. They still have a couple of more hours to go. That's where we're going to leave them. We'll see you and them in the morning. By the power of television, it is morning and what a morning. It's lashing rain. The mist is on the hills. It's freezing cold. We've got our problems. They certainly have theirs. They were up most of the night and early again this morning trying to get the car ready. It's now, well, it's now about five hours away from the race, so we should be on the road pretty soon to Rose Green, which is just outside Cashelon County Tipperary for the National European Hot Rod Championship. The track was built in the 80s, uh, and it uh, closed for a while, and then it was leased out for a while, and I took it over about four years ago. And uh, we've been building the formulas uh, over the years, and our drivers have been going to England, and we've been getting the English drivers coming over. And we've been getting, we're, we're now being recognised as one of the top tracks in England and Ireland. We're possibly the best kept secret in Southern Ireland as regards motorsport. Uh, anybody that has starts on an oval track can develop to any other type of racing, but it's more difficult for anybody else on any other circuits to go back to an oval. I mean, um, Villano, who's uh, chasing for the World Championship, he's come off an oval. The standard of racing, the standard of Irish drivers in comparison to European drivers, how is that? Uh, they're as good, uh, if not better, than anyone in Europe, like Holland or Belgium. They've beaten them in England at race meetings. They go to England uh, at least four times a year. They race in Ipswich, uh, Wimbledon, and uh, Hendensworth in Birmingham, and we in Essex, and uh, Ringwood in south of England and they can hold, hold with the best of them. They come in, they usually come in in the top 10. We've had second placings in big race. We were fourth in the world final a couple of years ago. So our guys are well regarded abroad. The drivers themselves won't become millionaires by taking part in the sport. I mean, what is the state of prize money? They do it for the love of it. Uh, it's, it's a title. Where will win the European title? Uh, tomorrow it goes on his CV he has won the European title in 96 and was in Tipperary and he'll be known through the the motorsport fraternity in his group as doing that uh, sometimes uh, we've helped at this time we've helped a lot of the drivers come in on the ferries and things so prize funds wouldn't be uh, big at this this time but we're hoping to get it again next year and get it in some major sponsor which would allow us to have a big prize fund but they don't really make money out of it they just love it we just look at the bus behind you, you can take two cars, sleep six people, you have a shower, you have, I mean, where does the money come from? Well, I suppose we work hard for it, you know, we work hard for it all year round and work for like 20 years and, and we enjoy our racing, you don't get no money out of the school, so we get a bit of advertising out of the coach with the sign writing and um, we built it all in house ourselves, so it keeps the cost at a right minimum, um, and it gets a bit of advertising. What, but, what attracted you to the sport? I don't know, I've been doing it for about, well, I don't know, now 20 